right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Steve Langford. I'm the Chief Information Officer for the Beaverton School District. I want to welcome you to this session. We're going to be talking about the Zoom platform today. And um, we have Stein Nelson, who is with Zoom, an account executive, and Lance Ford. And they. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to them and get out of the way and enjoy the session, everyone. Thanks, Steve. Thanks everybody for joining ACPE this year. We're super excited for this event. Uh, both Ken Gary, my peer up in Washington and myself have been involved in ACPE for over three decades. And uh, even when they didn't like vendors, we were involved. So now that we're in this new era of vendor friendliness at ACPE for many, many years, it's been a great event for us to mingle and talk and share ideas. But we are privileged today to have Dr. Lance Ford with us. He's a distinguished collaboration expert. He's an educator. He's also a great stagehand, and I'll let him tell you about that later. But without further ado, thanks, Dr. Ford, for joining us today. And we're going to talk about a lot of different subjects. So put your hats on, get ready, and let's go. Well, Stein, first and foremost, thank you for having me. Um, I'm, I'm just privileged to be here with you guys and really stoked to not have a presentation, but to have a conversation. Now we're in a we're in a platform that's built for shows, right? So um, what we're gonna have to do is do things a little differently. I'm gonna use a little bit of polling, a little bit of Slido. We're gonna leverage a little bit of uh, hopefully being able to promote you to the stage as well. That's why we have our host here with us to get some live Q and A. But let me kind of set the stage um, as to where I am and what I do. Um, let me share this real quickly. Boom, boom. So there's a map of the lovely United States of America, and I'm going to take a moment here and just kind of zoom into where I live. Yes, that is Oklahoma and that is Arkansas, and I'm still zooming. There's Fort Smith, Arkansas. I'm coming on down. There's Poto, Oklahoma. Population 13,000, salute, but that's not where I live. I live in a town the size of a small port potty. This is how Oklahoma where I get to be a music teacher, I get to help with the technology. Uh, heck, our superintendent drives a bus at the end of the day. And, and I have no idea how many of you guys are from small rural areas like I am, but I'm guessing based on where you are in the U.S., several of my friends out here today are, are kind of in the same situation I'm in. I'm going to pull this on down into the school. I'm literally standing under that red roof right there. This is the main thoroughfare onto campus. That's the high school. There's the middle school. There's the admin office, the gymnasium, the upper elementary and the cafeteria, and then our lower elementary here. Now, just outside my door, first and foremost, there's a door to my wife's classroom. That's right next door. But this guy right here, that's the playground. He doubles as a softball field during the day. So you may hear voices. Let me just say, first and foremost, those are not the voices in my head yet. They are becoming more pronounced every day. And I'm, I'm just going to tell you why. We, we closed our musical a week ago Sunday. We did Legally Blonde. Uh, for the last week, we've done end-of-school banquets. Today, I did my senior recognition. At, starting at 6.45 till about 9 o'clock, I cooked 150 pancakes, three pounds of bacon, three pounds of sausage, and a dozen fried eggs. So if this were scratch and sniff smell vision I would smell like a complete grease pot right now. You're very glad that it is not scratch and sniff experience, okay? So... What I want to know is, who are you guys? And I guess as a part of this, this is going to just be sort of a free form response. I'd really like to know if you have a specific thing that you came today hoping to get out of our content. It's really important for me anytime I, um, anytime I present to a group to hear what you want to hear. Um, and, and I don't want to just be the Lance dance. Okay. So I don't know if you've ever used this tool or not. You can use your QR reader on your phone to pop in there if you'd like to. I'll fire it off in just a second after everybody has a chance to actually see this QR code. Stein, are, are you able to see the, you can use the website slido.com with that number or the QR code. Can you see that okay? Yeah, and I just took a picture of it and I'm uh, actually going to the Slido on Safari right now. So if anybody's having any problems with it, just uh, put up a, uh, in the Q&A or the chat. Just uh, We'll try to help you as best as we can. Thank you so much, Stein. And again, if you if you know if you're not a QR person, that's fine. 
Open up another browser, slido.com. That's the number, 740215. Haven't started it yet, but I'm about to in five, four, three, two. That's slido.com, 740215. Okay. One. Tell me a little bit about who you are, where you're from, what your job responsibility is. And again, if you've got specific topics that you're thinking to yourself, Lance, dude, I, the whole reason I'm here is to talk about X or Y or even Z. And you understand for a music major, that's a big deal, right? Because I only have seven letters through the first seven, A through G, and then we start over, right? So to get to an X, Y, and a Z is kind of a big deal for me. So um, if you've got X, Y, Z, or A through G, put it in there and go ahead and share a little bit about who you are, if you don't mind. And I'll give you guys a few minutes, and I'm going to talk just a little bit more while you're doing that. And then we'll, uh, we'll find, hey, Rachel, welcome. So glad you're here. You guys, even once you send, you can send multiple times. It's not a one-time post. So Rachel, if you didn't quite get all the information in before you hit return, not a big deal. Keep typing. It's all good. Um, so being here at the school for the last, golly, it's been almost 20 years. I start my 20th year, July the 1st, um, third child of immigrant Norwegians born and raised in Seattle. Congratulations. I'm so glad uh, that your family's here. I don't know if you'd rather be in Norway right now with everything that's going on, but, uh, glad that you're here and working as an amazing CIO, Rachel. Thanks for joining me. Our, our kids here. The interesting part about this is our kids here, 80% of them qualify, 85% qualify for the federal free and reduced lunch program. That means in our, in our terminology that they're, they're basically on food stamps. Okay. 90% of my students here are Native American. This quadrant of the state is labeled as the Choctaw Nation. And so we're in a high poverty, high rural, highly indigenous area. And the power behind the tool Zoom is the ability for my students to have a vision of what life can be beyond the confines of where they find themselves today. And as we go through this, I want you to know that's my heart. Uh, this is not just uh, me pontificating on the one, uh, wonderful, amazing things the students and teachers get to do here. This is really about watching students who my first day, actually my first day was school live, uh, as the students came, ran into a big strapping young man in the hall. And I said, uh, what's your name? He told me. And I said, so what grade are you in? He said, I'm a senior. I said, oh, man, that's awesome. I'm brand new here. It's great to meet you. What do you want to do next year? And here was his direct response. And, and please, I'm not trying to be culturally insensitive. I just want to tell you what he told me. He said, Dr. Ford, I want to draw a check. And I said, boy, wouldn't we all like to do that? And he's like, no, no, listen, my dad fishes and hunts. My granddad fishes and hunts. They both get a government check. That's what I'm going to do. In fact, if I could have dropped out in eighth grade, I'd have done that a long time ago. As a general rule, Working with students, what I have found is that many of them have no vision of what their lives could be beyond where they find themselves today. So regardless of the direction this conversation takes, we're going to focus on what's best for students, what's best for faculty, and then the community as a whole. All right. I got uh, Lauren. Welcome as a network technician, director of technology and math. Math teacher, excellent. I can feel your pain um, because 250 students total. Ours has about 600. Honestly, that is three-year-old program up through 12th grade. All right, so I can appreciate a graduating class of sub-20 any day of the week. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Megan, senior director. Okay, awesome. Senior secretary of student records department. All right, so main, making sure students get to where they need to be with their processes and you guys get that farmed out to where it needs to be. Application development, Oregon Department of Education. Great. Love to talk just a little bit about how this tool that we're on today, well, we're not using Zoom, but provided we were using Zoom, how that actually ties to places where teachers already live. Things like their learning management system and the APIs that make that possible. Because with that development background, there are some awesome opportunities. All right. Scroll on down. There's Rachel. Let's go back up. Tech support specialist. Great. 
user facing frontline face of IT department in two large elementary schools. Bless your heart. I can totally appreciate the challenges of, uh, I was the guy who crawled around under the desk. And, and you know what that means. I don't mean that in a weird way, all right? Uh, the whole way I ended up doing what I'm doing is I had a passion for technology and individualization and learning. Um, and the superintendent found out and he said, hey, can you fix my, and then a teacher found out and said, hey, can you fix my, and can you fix my, and, can you? and so I became that guy, crawling around under the desks, okay? And I always told the teachers who left candy in their desks for me, put a little sticky note that just says candy, your classroom is first all the time. All right, systems analyst for Bellingham. Wow, great to have you, Lori. Ed tech director, web developers. Excellent, computer support, Ryan. Bless your heart, what a crazy year for you with all your computers. Pro and I don't know if you have a one-to-one -one or, or a BYOD policy, but things that had to go home and that you still had to support. Wow, 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 wow. Excellent. I'm going to, I know some of you are still typing. I don't want to pinch anybody off, but I, I do want to forge ahead into our topic for today. And I, and I don't want to belabor this, but guys, this is meant to be a model of what we can actually do in a classroom with remote hybrid hyperflex models. It don't have to be a sit and get. And I know that's not proper English. My wife is a grammar teacher, library media specialist. All right. But to use the Southeast Oklahomaism, it don't it don't got to be, all right? It don't got to be a sit and get, S-I-T-G-E-T. -E it needs to be an individualized, differentiated, yes, unfortunately right now for most of us, hybrid, if not completely distributed learning environment. How do we accomplish that? Where have you been on your journey? And where do we see this going in the future? Those are the things I'd love to talk about today as a part of our time together. And, and the topic just was simply for the session was, are you ready? Now, Stein, I've been rattling the gums. And if I didn't learn anything else from a PhD program, I did learn how to take a five minute response and turn it into 25 minutes with the best of them. And no offense to anybody who's got the PhD like I do, but you know, it just stands for piled higher and deeper, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so so there you go. What I wanna encourage is people, throw your chats, throw your questions in here. Lance is here for a reason to answer all those questions. If he hasn't worked with a piece of hardware uh, in, in collaboration, then it hasn't been vetted by uh, immensely. And when when we saw Lance join Zoom, Ken Gary and I, we were tickled pink because we've seen him speak many times. He is a breath of fresh air in education uh, and he knows how to put things together uh, very simply. And, and he knows how things work in education because he has done everything in education. So. We are super excited to have him here. So don't be shy. Put your questions in either Slido or in the conversation here. Um, we've got 55 people in this session, and I can't imagine with nothing happening last night that you guys are all hung over and have no questions this morning. So let's get it going. We've got tons of uh, time here. Don't be afraid. Uh, and I've never found this, this group at ACPE of being afraid of anything. So uh, don't forget to, to ask your questions, your observations. If you've got a feature request for Zoom, uh, the education market is where all our features basically come from. That's um, correct. And uh, it is the number one vertical at Zoom. So uh, I've never been at a tech company where education was the number one vertical. So let's take advantage of this and leverage this. First question. Yes. Oh, Mr. Vask, he's just making an observation. If you guys don't know Rob Vask, he's at Fortinet. He's a former uh, compatriot of ours at a former company worked together, and I think Mr. Ford knows him well. Yes. Thanks, Rob, for, for saying that. Do you have a question, Rob? I doubt it. He's probably in the throes of getting ready for his session this afternoon or this week. So, so Lance, I have a quick question for you. One of the observations, I'm a sports nut, as most people can see by my background with some of the sports paraphernalia that I have. But this is a question and an observation that I saw in the Oregonian, which is the local Portland newspaper here. Two kids from a local high school are transferring to a school in Arizona for sports reasons, obviously, but it's a considered a national high school. And... A national high school, I've never heard of that. They're going to play a national sports schedule. But yes. is this something with the onslaught of the pandemic and charter schools and distance learning and parents seeing that they don't have to 
send their kids off to school that they can stay home and teach. Is there is there something that we should be aware of or superintendents should be aware of of losing their constituents or losing their student body to alternative forms of education? Um, it's a serious subject because I think it's yeah. going to hit us like a like stepping on a rake in the fall. And I've heard superintendents uh, say upwards of 50 percent of their student body is going to walk out their front door. Yeah. Now that seems a little high to me. But when superintendents bring up that number, not not marketing people, superintendents, that's something to be aware of. And that's something that I think that needs to be discussed here this week is how is IT going to adapt to make their district attractive from a marketing perspective or off, offer an alternative to distance learning within their district so parents don't have to go and chase down national high schools or national charter schools or state charter schools. Because an interesting unknown fact is that that Baker Charter School in the state of Oregon in Baker City, Oregon, which is not a town much bigger than Howe or in Oklahoma that you live in, is the third largest charter school in the state of Oregon out of little Baker City, Oregon. Yes. So those numbers are alarming to me. Um, so do you mind making a comment or observation? You've had discussions with tons of superintendents across this great country, and yeah. I'd love to hear what the, some of the feedback that they're giving to you. So um, let's start with that, and then I'm going to get to um, Garen. Garen's got a question. I think Kevin's got a question. We may have some technical questions here around, I'm assuming, on inviting members. We're talking about Zoom. We're going to talk about that here in a moment. But to address Stein's question directly, I, please, y'all, hear my heart. Don't just hear my voice. Because I tell you what we are doing at this little school, that does not make it right. It does not make it the only way, and it does not even necessarily make it the best way for your culture and your geography, okay? There are 800 people physically who live in this town. There are 670 students who attend school here. Now, either our parents are really busy, you know what I mean by that, or I've got students coming from other locations. And that's ex the, the latter is what's actually happening. Um, we have in excess of 60% of our student population who does not live in this district physically. Let that sink in for a second. So we're not a national school. We're not a charter school. We're not a private school. We are a public school in rural Southeast Oklahoma. Now, why, why is this happening here? A, parents are looking at the amazing opportunities their students have here, number one, and saying, hey, I want me part of that. My kid needs to have a flexibility. So we have three ways that you can attend school here. You can be a completely online student from our school. We have the same faculty members who are teaching in-person classes helping, assisting, overseeing those online, fully asynchronous courses. Now, who does that impact? And again, not, not knowing your full culture, let me let you in a little of ours. We have multiple students who do national rodeo circuit. Okay, they ride and they travel a lot. They still want the cultural experience of a small school. They live physically a couple of communities over, but they rodeo with a lot of people who live here. And so they are actually joining us asynchronously and then scheduling office hours. We'll look at that inside our learning management system here in just a few moments with faculty members to say, hey, can we get a little assistance? Hey, can we get a little help? Hey, can you kind of refresh or recap? You guys know Zoom, and that's why you joined this particular session. They know how to watch the recordings, and those recordings are automatically fronted inside our learning management system. All of these experiences allow us to easily teach physically in class and repurpose the same rich media experience for our remote learners via our learning management system. So that's how we're doing asynchronous. We also have some students who are what we call blended. And when we say blended, what we mean is I have one, two, three, four, five, five students in my first hour choir class who literally show up for choir, then go home and work the rest of the day on their school stuff. The other end of the day, we have probably 10 or 15 students 
who literally show up for basketball practice last hour and spend the rest of their day asynchronously working on their stuff. They're still governed by the same eligibility requirements. Okay. They're still governed by a lot of the, all the same things that are applied to somebody who's physically here all day long, as far as coursework, graduation credits, where they have to be, the scope and sequence, it all applies. Again, why? Because when you're using the same tool for your in class instruction that you're using for your online and remote instruction, you can offer options for parents. And if parents learn nothing else through the pandemic, they learn that they can have options. Y'all, it's never been like this before. It's always been the people who live in the town go to the school where the town is because it's the closest one to their home. I've got kids 50 miles away in school here. Okay, sort north, south. I'm right against the Arkansas border, so I don't have a lot to the east. I can only go to the Arkansas border because a lot of my teachers are not certified there as well. Uh, but south. In, in three directions, 50 miles is how I have students. Now, the power of Zoom as a platform player inside here is that we're a Google shop. I don't, I don't know what you've chosen to use, Google, Microsoft, what your authentication scheme is. But the login procedure for these classes, the LMS, the live Zoom experience, is single sign-on through Google. So our Google accounts can be automatic, and this kind of gets to the question that was there a, mo a moment ago, and thank you, Jamie, for that. Um, you, you can tell it is a big day for me, all right? Um, so anyway, uh, this, the same login that they use to access their courses is the Zoom login. And what we've done is inside Zoom, you can have different roles or groups, and you can either provision full pro licenses for them or just add them to your domain and manage them. You don't have to give them a pro license if you don't want to. But anytime they sign on to Google, I can choose. And if they, if I've got multiple things inside my SAML, and I'm not trying to get all techie weeds here. So those of you who are SAML, stop letting you kill me. Okay. But if I've got particular identifying fields inside SAML, i.e., what is your group? Is it student or teacher? Well, I mean, I, I mean, the Zoom client will the Zoom login will see that. And when it passes that information, it will automatically assign them to that group and give them the appropriate rights for starting, for managing their meetings, for the settings for all their meetings. All of that's pre-populated. So when they start a live meeting, it's not like, uh, and you can undo anything you want as a teacher, but it means when you start a live meeting, your mics are going to be muted for class. So we don't spend the first 15 minutes. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, Johnny, get out of the drive through Burger King. Okay, I, you know, I don't care how many Big Macs you want today. But all of those things are there and tied and passed directly through. So, Stein, I'm not saying that every school has to do this, but I'm truly trying to build on what you said and saying we are missing an amazing opportunity if we don't at least explore options for parents because they now expect them. Well, and Garen Shannon from Pullman School District in lovely Pullman, Washington, the Palouse and the home of the Washington State Cougars, just made a great observation that they've had distance learning. They've been teaching kids at Pullman from China, from Canada, yep. Mexico, Australia, all via some collaboration tool. We're, we're glad that it's Zoom, but in, in this case, you know, the collaboration tools are pretty prevalent out there. And so that's just the thing. The other thing that is interesting observation is, will the pandemic, do you think, Dr. Ford, allow school districts to monetize those superstar teachers that they have? meaning monetize, meaning be able to sell them to other districts or put them on Zoom, which is a platform for monetizing certain types of collaboration or types of synchronous or asynchronous learning, uh, depending on your time. But do you think districts will, some districts will monetize certain teachers then? So uh, this is a sticky wicket and I'm gonna just pry a little bit on the can. We can philosophically talk about this for the next hour and a half, okay? But I am very blessed. I feel blessed. You may be fortunate, lucky, whatever your worldview is, to be in a school where the leadership doesn't just do it because it's always been done that way. And the whole reason we started with distance ed going now on, I start my 20th year in July. So wrapping up our 19th year of distance ed. 
The whole reason we started this was because we didn't have the faculty members hired to actually deliver all the mandates from the State Department of Education. So what we thought we would do is put in hardware and then harvest content into our school. What we quickly found, Stein, was there were a lot of schools around us that when we asked, hey, would you offer us that class? Their response or retort was, hey, we don't have that class either. If you find somebody who's willing to offer it, let us know we're willing to pay for it. Now, it was literally six calls with different superintendents. When we hung up the sixth call, my, I was on one side of the desk, my superintendent was on the other side. He said, now, we're thinking about this all wrong. <laughs> what prevents us from hiring a faculty member, positioning them here and recovering the cost for their salary by offering the content out? I said, absolutely nothing. So we have got to the point now where we literally subcontract faculty members for that very purpose. And because of the evolution of the tool and the increase in availability of bandwidth, we are now subcontracting with people who can teach from their homes. Now, I'm not saying we're a full online school. We have no desire to do that. I kind of have a desire to do that, but the superintendent doesn't. But we're not, we're not an online school. Uh, but we do provide, try to provide flexibility for those faculty members because a lot of those faculty members we're dealing with now are AP Chem, AP Physics, things that no one in their right mind wants to live in Howe, Oklahoma that has that expertise. I got it, okay? And some of y'all, based on the, the numbers that I saw in the in original Slido, some of y'all are sitting in the exact same spot I am, right? So you have to look at this model differently, and we're not a for-profit organization. We have to be very careful there. That's one of the comp that's one of the rabbit holes we can go down. We cannot be a for-profit organization. I can't charge people one thing and make money and then you know not have it as an outgo to faculty. So we are very careful to pay faculty stipends, do the right thing, and to be able to grow our local curriculum for our students, all the while helping regional schools around us. Great. Great point. Great answer and great. Uh, I think it is a it is a great. That's why I love ACPE because it allows you to have these types of conversations that are what ifs um, in a safe environment, right? Usually that's we're right. up in the woods outside Mount Hood, Oregon, but you know, in this case with it virtual, I think we can still have those those frank conversations, those tough conversations. Um, around how IT can really bolster a school district's, um, you know, agenda to a certain degree. If a superintendent is a little bit more forward thinking, you've got to be able to put the foundation in place that allows them to launch whatever platform they want to. And being adaptive and having an adaptive platform, I think, is 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 very very important. Speaking of platform, <clears throat> yes. Um, you've been, you know, working with a lot of big organizations in your career, specifically Cisco. And, yes. you know, one of the things that, you know, Cisco has prided themselves on is the hardware mentality of selling hardware, building an infrastructure that, that can support a foundation of student learning, right? What was, you know, one of the, one of the reasons why you came to Zoom and we had this discussion when Ken and I saw that you joined Zoom, we were super excited and we reached out to you right away because we've worked with you in the past. But, you know, it's a hard question to ask, but yeah, what, what, yeah what, 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 what were some of the reasons why you came to Zoom? Not why you left Cisco, but why you came to Zoom? You know, let's try to keep it on the positive. Well, absolutely. But, yeah. And, and I, a complete transparency with everyone. To my knowledge, now this may have changed in the last four weeks, um, but to my knowledge, I, I don't think I have anybody at Cisco who, who I've torqued off. You know, I was literally not running from anything. I, I love that organization. I love the hardware. I love the people. I love the software. My, my passion, y'all, is EDU. And with all that I am, as hard as when I first started my career, I tried to run away from teaching. I, and I really did. I tried a lot of different things. I mean, I even got to the point where I was working on the ABF. Uh, that's a that's a freight company. I was working on the ABF freight dock, loading trucks, diesel trucks, to not have to teach, uh, because I I just thought I'm not going to be a teacher. My mom was a teacher. My dad was a principal. Um, I saw the life that led to and the challenges that it brought, and I just was not going to do that. And then. I got asked, I was the minister of worship of my church when the superintendent who in our regional community came up to me and said, 
Hey, I understand you got a teaching degree. And I was like, yeah, my mom made me get that. I couldn't graduate. <laughs> I got it. Um, he's like, well, what are you, what are you certified in? I said, I'm certified in music. You know, you just kind of, Oh God, no, please, please, please. Lord, my head. I said music. He said, well, we're expanding our music program and we have an assistant band director job open and we'd love for you to consider doing assistant band and maybe, maybe a, a, a high school vocal music class. Would you consider doing that? And at the time I was making $12,000 a year at the job I was on. And I was like, okay, I have a degree. I actually had two degrees at the time and I'm making $12,000 a year. And I was married and we were trying to start a family. And I was like, all right, let's do this. So I, I started teaching. And once I started teaching, I realized the impact I could have in students' lives. And I'm going to not get emotional. Um, I, I, you guys have seen me take a couple of swigs out of this. My, uh, my students the other night gave this to me at the last performance. It says, yo, the best music teacher, right? Um, I, I love kids. I can't help it. I love, I love working with kids. So fast forward to where I am and why I made a move. As I am coming into Zoom, I am so excited about the fact that EDU is a priority. Now, Stein's not blowing smoke up your dress where he says a lot of the innovations that we see happening in this platform are coming from you. They're coming from folks just like you who are going, hey, I need to be able to, hey, can we, hey, have you thought about, hey, I need to manage, uh, let's take the Zoom bombing as an instance, okay? Teachers got so excited, everybody started using Zoom and they start screenshotting everything and they're sharing all this stuff on social media. Well, bad news, at that point, the conference room number or the, the room ID was literally on the screenshot. Every time somebody shared a screenshot from their class and the cool things they were doing with their kids, there's a little number in the upper left-hand corner that was the number of the meeting. And so consequently, ne'er-do-wellers, uh, things like Reddit, and from IT brethren, you know what I'm talking about, okay? Things like Reddit, they're posting this sort of stuff on there. Hey, you need to go to this nine-digit code, this 12-digit code, this 15-digit code, and do something god-awful. It's a third-grade class, Miss Jones, in wherever, Oregon. It got so bad, y'all, and I and I had it for a long time. Uh, but I was so distraught with a comment that was made in our state newspaper from our state superintendent. One of their meetings, their state board member meetings, got bombed, and her direct comment was, "I guess this is just the new normal." And I know that the color dropped completely out of my face, right? Because if you're telling me that my third grade class can be bombed, by people walking down the hall and doing god awful things, then no parent's going to send their kid here. Zoom reacted. Zoom said, "All right, for the next thirty days, it's all about forty-five days. It's all about security. Stop development. We got to get this thing under control." And they completely redesigned the user interface for a live Zoom call, so that we could begin to eliminate those kinds of things. They are looking for opportunities to move this ball forward. I'm, I'm going to bring up another one that I'm really excited about here, Stein. One of the things that I was really stoked, let me uh, share this screen with you. And I may have to read log in again, so y'all bear with me. I was working with my working with one of my classes online. Yep, there we go. Stein, can you guys see my Moodle site? I can see it. Okay, let me, there we go. So I, I get to teach teachers too. I get to work with faculty members. And so not only do I love working with college age, I teach online for a regional college. Um, I teach here at the school. Not only do I do those, but I also work with faculty members. So one of the things I'm excited about, and for those of you who don't know this, this is at no cost to you. Um, and it is, I think, yeah, here it is. The LTI Pro integration, It depending on your LMS of choice, you the whole walkthrough is here. So if you're a Zoom, if you have a Zoom licensed account, you can do what I'm about to show you, all right? So you go in, you plug it in, Check this out. My entire scheduling for the whole semester is right here. I come in one time, either at the beginning of the semester or for UK 12ers, if you've got it going on all year, it's not a semester by a semester course shell. You come in here at the beginning of the year and you say, I'm teaching third grade math, right? It's gonna start at the beginning of the year. I'm just randomly choosing a date. It's time is one o'clock in the afternoon. 
It lasts. I don't know how your classes roll, but mine lasts for 45 to 50 minutes. It's recurring. It happens, again, not knowing if you're on block schedule or not. Mine happen on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And either the end of my semester or the end of my year is this date in the future. And then I can start setting security preferences. Again, we're right back to what we were talking about a moment ago, the modifications that needed to be made to keep people out. One of them is require authentication. Since we're using single sign-on, like some of you all are, they must authenticate through the LMS to get into my class. If I turn that on, what about video when it starts on? Want to see what's going on at the student house? Probably not to start off with. I have a lot of kids with low bandwidth. So I need them to be able to have options when they join. I don't want them to ever sound like, oh, 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 they need to be able to join via the phone when it gets bad, okay? Probably going to mute students on entry. I'm going to go ahead and check this because this is fun. I can record on the local computer or in the cloud, in the Zoom cloud. If I choose to record in the Zoom cloud, y'all, let me do this. There's polls, there's all that sort of stuff. If I choose to record into the Zoom cloud, when class is over, there is no upload, there is no FTP, there is no send out embed codes, there is no email notification I need to worry about. It's automatically posted right here. The kid literally comes in and clicks, do I want to watch the video, do I want to watch the audio? Now, I've made mine downloadable because, again, a lot of our kids don't have bandwidth at the house, so they have to take some of this stuff with them before they leave. If you don't want to make it downloadable, obviously you can set that as an option too. But this entire experience is not just here in my plugin, y'all. Watch it. <laughs> to use another Southeast Oklahomaism, watch this, right? Hold my, hold my solo cup. I'm hitting the calendar button for the LMS. Here are the calendar things. Here's my third grade math that I just scheduled. So the student has all of their courses color-coded right alongside their due dates, when the test is, when the assignments are, when the bake sale is going to be, it's all there and it's auto-populated because of this LTI plugin. Y'all, if you are using any sort of experience that has an LTI opportunity and you've got a Zoom license, there is no reason for you to not, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm down here, I'm begging, okay? There is no need for those students, or the, I'm, excuse, I'm sorry, those teachers to go out to xyz.zoom.us, schedule something, copy and paste all those links, make sure they get them in the right spot, stop. That's just adding more challenge to them. Embed it where they already live. That's part of the commitment of Zoom to this world. They are committed to making sure that educators, faculty members have a seamless technology transparent experience. Um, and uh, our faculty is just really, really, really excited about these opportunities. So anyway, I'm stepping off my soapbox, Stein. I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, that was good, Lance. Hey, one of the things that, you know, Ken Gary, who's my peer in Washington State, who's not able to be backstage, but is out there in the in the out there amongst the audience, but he brought up a good point as far as, you know, we've talked about what the new normal is going to look like in the fall um, with, you know, Oregon specifically where I live, you know, we've rolled back in 13 counties back to no indoor eating. You know, there seems to be a surge of COVID-19 amongst some of the states. Uh, what, what, what are you hearing as far as what the fall is going to look like when you've talked to various districts across the country and if not across the globe and what are they planning on and looking at in the fall? I mean, is it going to be a mix of hybrid? Is it going to be back in school? I mean, it's a kind of the same question we've had, but is there a new normal and what does that look like in your eyes? So in Oklahoma, and a friend of mine came up here to visit me about three months ago. He's like, hey, nobody there wearing a mask. What are y'all doing? And I said, you know, in Oklahoma, we're, we're a concealed carry state. We take out whatever we need to and take care of COVID. And I was just joking, right? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend anybody, right? Uh, but I, it, it's going to vary wildly, Stein, from state to state. I just talked to folks in Maryland this morning. Uh, finished cooking the pancakes and everything. Jumped right into a call with folks in Maryland. And they are going to be 100% high flex is what they're calling it. I call it hybrid. 
which means that the student is going to have the option to physically be in the room if they're comfortable with that, if they feel like that's a necessity and they really their parents really want them there, or or join remotely, be it asynchronously or synchronously. And I, I hate to, oh, golly, this sounds awful, y'all. I hate to put it this way, but now competitive market has finally entered public education forever. And I don't mean that competitive market as far as buying stuff. I mean, as far as the R word, the word we can't use, recruiting students like a college or university. I've got to show more value than the school that's 15 miles that way, 15 miles that way, and 20 miles that way. Or my students are going to go there. Literally, they're going to go there. So I think that for folks who are willing to do it, and I'm always very careful because this is not the culture everywhere. And even within your state, uh, an amazing state like Washington or Oregon, I know we got somebody on from South Dakota today. There are going to be rural communities like this one who are like, dude, I don't care what you say. This is the way we're doing it. Okay. Um, so it, it has to culturally fit for your entity and your geo, but I would strongly suggest the exploration of at bare minimum, a hybrid experience. Now, I'm gonna set a link out here, and I, I did put the uh, LTI link out there. I'm gonna set a link out here for you guys to kind of play along with me as we go. Let me pull it up here. And just because I tell you what we're doing, and I show you, again, I'm gonna say it, doesn't make it right or the only way, all right? But for those of you who have enjoyed or you've explored and have liked the Zoom experience, the next iteration of that is how does Zoom become the rich media of your classroom? Because before we go here, and some of you already clicked, and that's fine. But before I go there, let me pontificate on this for one minute. If I have to use a separate tool for hybrid learning that I'm using for the rich media for the students who are in my class, to quote one of my teachers, I ain't got time for that. If I have to use a separate tool to record things for my students who are ill or my students who are fully asynchronous from me to make that happen for those students, I ain't got time for that. Teachers need a one-stop experience that can function for their in-room, their remote, their asynchronous learning opportunities, regardless of how students and parents choose to do this. So to please don't hear me say that I think hybrid learning is a solution. And you need 45 different solutions to make it happen. It's not. If that's where you're going, don't, because your faculty will revolt. And I know I'm preaching to the choir for a lot of you guys, but the faculty will come off the hinge. It's got to be one location. And just because I share this with you doesn't make it the only location. All right. But to me, Zoom rooms are the logical place for this to happen. Um, and I'm, I'm going to talk to you a couple of things about it. Um, a lot of you guys have already weighed in on this. We've looked at the LMS. Let's go here real quick. This particular, and Stein, can you see that slide? I know it's not full screen, but can you see it okay and read it okay? I I can read it. Um, let, me kick, yeah. let me kick it up full screen. Let me kick it up full screen. How's that? Yeah, there we go. Okay. And, and I'm a good litmus test because I'm probably the oldest guy on the call here. So if I can see it, anybody can see it. I will tell you this. When I went through my Zoom orientation, I was like, I'm old enough to be all y'all's dad. Okay. So anyway, um, so from a, from a classroom perspective, and the reason I've ordered this as I have from left to right is because the one thing that every teacher is going to do every day is present content to their classes. Somebody already mentioned about AirPlay. And having to have an Apple TV physically plugged in, blah, 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 blah. And I know Ken basically said, okay, time out. There's no need for that. Okay. That's what a Zoom room does. So if a teacher's got an iPad, they're physically walking around that room. They want to be able to share content as they're peering over the shoulders and navigating the aisles of that classroom. Y'all, it's wirelessing, wirelessly sharing, leveraging the whole experience of a Zoom room. It's AirPlay. Now, if you want to HDMI something in, you absolutely can hardwire in. That's not a big deal. Some of you guys have dot cams, for sure. But y'all, this drives at the day in, day out operations of class. Use case number one, we haven't talked about remote students yet. Let's go to use case number two. 
every math teacher I know expects to be able to walk up, write on a board, be it a grease board, <laughs> marker board, by some of my faculty members call it a grease board, a grease board or a smart board or some other sort of e-board like a Promethean or a BenQ projector or a ViewSonic or something like that. They all expect to be able to do that because they've got to disseminate information to their learners. When they've got content up on those e-boards, they expect to be able to annotate on that content to draw visual attention. Again, this is not at a distance. This is not hybrid stuff we're talking about. This is day in, day out in the classroom. But the last column is where we say we take the skill set we have on column A and column B, and we repurpose the exact same tool for column C, which is my hybrid or my full online or my high flex or my asynchronous learners. That is the virtual classroom that we're living in. So when we're talking about Zoom rooms, that's what we're talking about. And the, and the link I shared with you is simply a jumping off place, y'all, okay? Really, truly, it is meant to be a jumping off place. It's not meant to be the be all end all. But when I start talking to teachers about dry erase boards, document cameras, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I've used a document camera forever, or I've used a, or, um, a visa V marker forever. They understand this. How does what they currently do tie to the rich media that is a Zoom room? Because a Zoom room is the core of rich media. I just, just let that sink in for a minute. And here are some other things that we've already talked about. But as you go down through here, you're going to see all kinds of amazing tools that work directly with Zoom Rooms. Now, Zoom Rooms come in multiple flavors from multiple vendors. In fact, if I come down here a little bit, you're going to see the word neat, neat bar, neat pad. Neat pad is a big touch screen, 55, 65, 75 inch. There's another company called D10 that does those sorts of things. The bar. You can barely see it right there. Now the image is small, but the bar sits on top of the investment you've already made. This is a rock what you've got conversation, you guys. I mean, at the end of the day, you probably don't want me to hear it said like this, but in a small school, we count squares of toilet paper. All right, well, we don't count squares of toilet paper, but we do count reams of paper allocated to each faculty member. So to say I purchased all these displays, now you got to chuck all that so you can come in with a Zoom room, that's not reasonable, it's not acceptable, and we cannot take away the skill sets that teachers already have to put the Zoom room in place. There's touch, there's AV with green screen, okay? There's a blended learning design, and, and I, I like the way this is, but I gotta be honest with you, I had a friend talk to me the other day about his wife's classroom. He said, Lance, you're showing this picture and what I want you to see is my wife's classroom. And he shared a picture with me. I don't have it yet. But what she did, I thought it was ingenious. This row across the front, she took this chair and this chair, turned it 45 degrees to the right. Took this chair and this chair and took them 45 degrees to the left. She did that with every row. So now students in equal to VC are facing the middle. Then she took this monitor where she sees her remote learners, where that camera is, her remote learners see her, and she put it at the back of the room. Now she's teaching in a horseshoe environment. She's got students to her left looking at her. She's got students to the back looking at her. She's got students to her right looking at her. Why is that a big deal? Because now we have democracy in learning. I don't have remote second class citizens who are flies on the wall trying to comprehend what the heck is going on in my classroom. It's all of us. Another Southeast Oklahomaism, all y'all. It's all y'all, all right, in here with me taking this class. Some of you all I know are universities and you're in places where more advanced designs need to happen. Totally got that. Just a quick rundown. This is two 85-inch monitors. There's a camera facing the students. There's a, a touch screen on wheels here. There's two 65-inch uh, monitors here, and there's a camera here facing the instructor. The cameras auto-switch based on who's talking. They follow. The one thing I can't do in this darn webinar platform is I can't bring my I can't bring my tracking camera in. Sometimes Stein and Ken and I will get together with you if you're interested, and I'll show you all that because. Again, it makes the technology transparent to teaching and learning. So 
Hey, Dr. Dr. Ford, real quick, go back to that picture. And one of the things that's happening across the Northwest is with infrastructure upgrades being prevalent in every form of government, including education with new schools coming online. You know, how important is it is it to for the IT folks to get involved in the design of those classrooms to be future proof and give teachers the flexibility that they desire in laying out their classroom? Because of all the things that I've learned in teaching and learning throughout my career is that giving teachers that flexibility to adapt their room to their teaching style is the critical component to technology. Correct? Yeah, you're, you're bang on. Uh, the day that I walk into a classroom and say, here's the cookie cutter classroom, deal with it, is the day that I'll get my walking papers. Because while we're, we've talked a lot about students, uh, we haven't talked a lot about parental involvement yet, but we focus primarily on students. You guys know as well as I do, that's the expertise that's working with those students that makes or breaks the reputation of your school. So you don't hire people <laughs> based on anything other than their ability to work with students. So why would I try to force feed them something that doesn't work with their teaching style? That's why I love working here because regardless of the layout you choose, Regardless of the teaching tools that the teacher will use, and the first thing I ask teachers in teacher training is, how do you reach your learners today? And then follow it on the heels of, how do you individualize your learning for your learners today? What are your strategies for that? Okay. When we answer those two questions, then the Zoom room hardware speaks for itself. But regardless of the hardware, the operations is the exact same. It's the same Zoom experience that you already know. That's why I love this. It's not like room A, and I'm not bagging um, integration of, of third-party stuff like that. I'm not bagging that. I know there's a place for that. But I don't walk into 103 and then go to 104, and those rooms operate completely different. They may have different hardware. It may be different locations based on the teacher's, to, to Stein's point, desire and the way they teach. But – it's got to wrap around the same interface. So you as a technologist can have that standardized for remote assistance, for helping folks, for training folks, and all the things that we're tasked with doing day in and day out. So that interface looks like Zoom. Um, let me go here real quick, Stein, and I'll bring it up, share this. Y'all bear with me. I'm trying to learn this platform on the fly, and you've been very, very, very patient with me. Uh, let's do this. He's talking uh, about the AirMeet platform, folks. Yeah. the Zoom platform. No, I'm, I'm trying to learn the AirMeet platform on the yeah. fly here. Which, to be frank, has been a great platform for us to oh, work yeah. with. I've worked with other platforms with other events across the country, and I've got to say this AirMeet pro pro program is really good. I love the flexibility of the out-of-meeting experience in the AirMeet. Being able to grab up a chair, grab up a table, go to a vendor area, con converse with somebody, it's huge. Yep. All the things you would expect from a Zoom meeting, look at that icon, share your content, stop your video, mute your microphone. Now this one is actually in, is in host mode. So you see, I have the manage the participant. I can switch between cameras just like you can in Zoom. It's the same icon, changing the view. How many times have you gone from speaker view to gallery view inside your Zoom experiences? And yes, don't wonder what students are talking about. Even in your Zoom room, there's the chat button. You can see what's going on. Chat is not excluded just because we're leveraging the Zoom room as it is with other platforms. So these options are, I hate to use the word Zoom-esque, but they are extraordinarily Zoom-esque. In this image, you're looking at an iPad. Um, I can't bring up my document camera right this second, but I have a touch panel. It looks the exact same. If they choose an iPad to operate, great. If they choose a touch panel from Poly, Neat, D10, Logi, whatever they choose, it looks like this because it's about standardizing the experience and making sure teachers are comfortable. Yeah. Well, one of the things that's, the, I think, the one of the coolest things about Zoom is the interface is, is the same across every platform you use. So, and that's a great pivot point to talk about, Dr. Ford, is Zoom phone. And how does that play in the completion of the Zoom platform. You've talked about Zoom rooms, we've talked about Zoom meetings, but Zoom phone is the key component. And what 
is the differentiator for Zoom phone in the classroom for a teacher that has to communicate with parents and students, right? And, and having various platforms that they have to use to do that. Does this coalesce into one platform with Zoom phone or does Zoom phone give you that platform, do you think, in your opinion? Let's talk about this for a minute. Um, I was in a call with folks, I don't remember where they were. Dude, it's been a long morning already. Second call I was in, um, the guy who was on there from Zoom kept using the word UCAS, 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 UCAS. Zoom's not a video platform, it's a UCAS platform. And I'm watching, as the teacher, I'm watching everybody's facial expressions, right? Because that's what you do as a teacher. You're watching them. And this one lady's going, her eyes are starting to shift. And you can tell it's that student who feels like this is too dumb a question because no one is asking it, but I have no idea what UCAS is. So I wasn't trying to put her on the spot. I just said, hey, I, I'm really bad about acronyms and, and everything else. And I only have seven letters in my alphabet. And of those, U and S are not in the list. Do you have any idea what UCAS stands for? And she said, well, it's some sort of sharing platform. I said, it, that's conceptually correct. It's one shared platform. But anytime you hear somebody from Zoom just pop off an acronym, you guys need to go stop. What does that mean? Grab them by the throat. UCAS, for those of you who don't know, stands for Unified Collaboration as a Service. Okay? Unified Collaboration or Unified Communication as a Service. Now, U-C-A-A-S. UCAS. There you go. Um, and so when we started talking about that, she said, well, you know, I understand the video platform that is Zoom because my teachers love it. They actually had a different platform by a large company in the Northwest that shall remain nameless. And she said they kind of refused to use it because it's just a little too clunky for them. They love Zoom, so they're using free Zoom. So we got we got the power of that. You've demonstrated the Zoom room experience and why that's a big deal. But that kind of leaves out Stein's point, just day in and day out this. Pick up the phone and call somebody, right? As a UCAS platform, Zoom phone allows you to have all of those contacts and I so wish I could bring up my document camera whether it's on the touchpad underneath my document camera driving my poly gear whether it's on the phone that's literally on my desk or whether it's on the laptop client it is a single number to reach and bringing phone into the equation guys it's the lowest common denominator because my my mom is 83 she knows how to dial her cell phone. She knows how to dial a phone number. If I threw a laptop at her and said, hey, join this Zoom call, she'd go, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, what, what do you mean, join this Zoom call, right? Uh, what's, a, what's a Zoom? In fact, when I told her what I'd done with my career, she said, okay, what's a Zoom? All right, and I love her. She's 83 years old. She taught for uh, 50 years in, in classroom. But since she stopped teaching, she's like, you know, I, I play bridge. I go to church. Uh, that. That's my, that's my day. So, but she, even she knows how to use a phone. So as we look at the telephony side of this and the ability to put single number reach, not only on a phone, but on a Zoom room and on a Zoom client, now all of a sudden, regardless of how you experience this from an end user, you all as the technologists have one pane of glass where everything happens. You're provisioning, your tying of your user accounts to your platforms of, of choice for login, your Zoom room management and all the analytics as well as the provisioning for those rooms and the phone experience. Those of you who have the admin dashboard, you know what I'm talking about already. It is one place for everything as opposed to, well, here's my phone org. Um, and in order to do that, I need to change this on the PBX. We got to hardwire this. Or we have to roll out this particular thing. And when we roll that out, it doesn't impact my video at all. Or if it does, there's some weird thing that happens between those two so they can actually talk to each other. And I don't really understand what it is. Somebody else comes in and does that. But I need to be able to call a phone number from this video unit over to this phone. And when I upgraded this, it screwed that up. Okay, stop. That's why you have unified communication or unified collaboration as a service because it's a one-stop shop in the cloud. And all my Zoomies out there, close your ears for a second because I'm gonna torque somebody off. For you IT people, it's also one throat to choke. 
Okay. So as you explore this, um, it, it becomes a common watering hole for me to learn as opposed to three or four watering holes as the technologist that I have to master or find somebody or pay somebody, God forbid, at my school that can actually do all this and tie it together in the background. That's the power of Zoom phone in my mind, Stein, is that it's a one-stop shop for our amazing technologists who are out there. And what, interestingly enough, one of the most important features of Zoom phone and it's a simple one, is the teacher the ability to SMS from one platform so they don't have to use their personal cell phone number to do that. So it gives them, and it also gives them the ability when they make calls, not to come from that number, but to come from the main phone number of the school district. So, you know, that's also important. So it gives the teacher the flexibility to communicate with the parent or the student in the way that they want to. Well, and. And, and you hit on it. I'm just going to nail it down. And the privacy of not having every parent student have the number to this. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's that is truly. For those of you who's uh, here, here's the way our little COVID thing went down. I, I won't stay long on this, but both our boys and girls teams had qualified for the state tournament. 20 what was this 2020. Right. So they qualified for state tournament. They've been playing basketball all season long. It's the final eight teams in the state tournament statewide. They qualified. It's a three and a half hour bus ride one way to get to Oklahoma City from where I am. So kids, we have the big send off. The police escort them out of town. They're on the bus. They're driving three and a half hours. They open the door of the bus. In Oklahoma, we call it the big house. It's the state fairgrounds. They open the door on the bus and there's a state trooper standing there. And he does this. All tournament games have been canceled due to COVID-19. You need to get back on the bus and turn around and go right where you came from and do not stop. It was as if someone had taken the balloon and shoved not a pin into it, but a knife into it. It had been a decade since our boys teams made it to the state tournament. All right. Now, why, why am I telling you this? At that point, just like you, we all went into reaction mode. What's the state going to do? Is school canceled? Is it a state mandate? To, okay. Okay. How are we going to reach the parents? Okay, what are we going to do about grades? Okay, how do we finish the semester? How do we test? And the first response for all those teachers was, well, here's my cell phone number. Okay. So to be able to avoid that with an amazing tool like Zoom phone and to have the ongoing flexibility of it being a part of the culture and not just an emergency response, but when you need it, it's there, is absolutely huge. So Jason is asking, and I'm sorry, Zoom phone does texting, question mark? Stein, you want to weigh in on that just a little bit, my friend? Because this is an exciting conversation to have. Yeah, it does. It does. It allows you to SMS from the platform to a cell phone number, um, either whether it's a student cell phone number, a parent to cell phone number, but allows you to do that. That's one of the, it's an interesting, it's a small feature, but it's one of the ones that schools love the most when we talk to them about Zoom phone. Um, and we're talking to a lot of districts about Zoom phone because it seems to be a popular subject these days. Um, and, so, you, and you can just uh, wait in there on something that's very important as well. I never want to have a he said, she said moment on a text on my private cell phone, full logging too. Yep. The other thing is, is that if you get into a heated conversation with a parent, a teacher does, by pushing that record button, and that notification saying this call is being recorded will turn that conversation around very, very quickly. Yeah. So the parent will realize that they're being recorded and it'll change their tune immensely. So it's one of the other features that we've noticed that teachers really like um, with Zoom phone. You know, one of the things is, is that with, you know, Zoom, Zoom was, the, was the number one downloaded app last year on all platforms, Microsoft, Apple, and Google. First time an app has ever done that. What's important to remember is most people have Zoom phone on their cell phone or on their computer already, or Zoom meetings, excuse me, on there. So it, it, it basically to deploy Zoom phone, it's an administrative click. So it's a very easy product to deploy. So if you're looking at possibly using your ESSER funds to replace your PBX, 
Um, keep in mind that we work with some of the Cisco phones that are already out there deployed, not all of them, but some of them. We work with Poly, we work with Yaylink, we work with a lot of different phone platforms. So you can repurpose a lot of those handsets that are already on the desk. So it's going to give you a lot of money overall a lot of times. Plus, we have great relationships with Poly and great relationships with Yaylink. And I do know OETC sells Poly and has a great relationship there. So that's also a lot. Keep in mind, uh, we also have another session this afternoon with Presidio where we're going to talk about securing Zoom and securing cloud-based platforms with Presidio. Presidio has a uh, high-end uh, security consultant coming on by the name of Troy. We're also going to have Freddie Guerrero, who's our solution engineer extraordinaire on that call, to answer any of those questions around security. So we've got that right. covered as well. But, you know, we're running up. We've got nine minutes left of this session. Um, you know, some of the some of the things to keep in mind about Zoom is um, if you've got it, don't forget to reach out to your rep, either Ken or myself. And in, in your renewal is a great time to talk about your licensing structure. If you're not in education licensing, you need to be in education licensing, not pro licensing, not biz licensing. Work with us That's to right. get you in the right platform that allows you to take advantage of the license structure fully. So keep that in mind. The other thing is just don't be afraid to ask questions or come up with feature ideas, share them with us because there is a mechanism for us to put that in the feedback loop. Um, and Dr. Ford is available for you to ask questions in the future. He is a Zoom asset that we have. We have lots of lots of resources to bring to bear. Uh, Dr. Ford, if you talk to Pat Lamort, our global education specialist in K-12 about this summer's Zoom education uh, network or Zen network uh, event that we're having and coming in July, August timeframe for teachers. I have just not gotten a full download from Pat, uh, but I, I guess that's what I would leave you guys with. I realize you got a bajillion and one things you got to think around with right now. And, and as the end of school is approaching, it's the time for upgrades, adoption training and prepping for the fall. I got it. Okay. But one of the things that I'm really excited about is the Zen Network. Um, and it's, it's one of the things that drew me to this company and its commitment to education. Uh, this opportunity for educators globally who are leveraging Zoom to have exchanges with each other, to learn best practice, to kind of see what's emerging, kind of maybe even get a little idea of where it's going, how it plugs into different things that they're already using in their classroom. That Those are the conversations that happen there. Right. And I, I, I heard some ridiculous numbers of, of people who came last year and I just I was blown away. And it's because folks like you have sent out to their faculty members. This is what's going on. Uh, Stein, I don't have the link to the sign up for that yet, uh, but I'm more than happy to. As soon as I dig that out from Pat, I'm more than happy to uh, get that to this amazing group and have them maybe. I don't know if y'all can put stuff on your website or whatever, but have that word out there because educators learn from other educators. Honestly, this is one of the most bizarre um, <laughs> jobs on the planet. And I could be completely transparent. Um, I don't learn from math teachers. I don't really care what's going on in the math classroom. I want to know how you teach your music class in a hybrid environment. I want to know what musical you did this year. I want to know how you pulled off a performance. I want to know how you licensed. So all of those conversations where people can birds of a feather together is what the Zen Network's all about. Bringing folks who have common interests together to have these conversations. And, yeah, well, and one thing we'll do is we'll put, a, if we get a link during the ACPE, we'll put it on the on Discord. And don't forget to stop by our booth. Uh, come visit us. Ken and I will be there from 10, 245 to 345. We'll also have some other Zoom people there to answer any questions. Um, and if you want to have a further, deeper discussion, we can always set up a Zoom meeting with you. That's not a problem. We have no problem doing that. We can also do Zoom with all kinds of demos um, and engage you many, many ways at Zoom. So that's the one thing that I love about Zoom is the feedback loop with customers is there. Again, we take most of our features from our customer group. Um, that's where we get our best uh, uh, ideas. Um, I think that's all I got. Uh, we've got five minutes left um, on 945. Again, come to our booth. 
Uh, reach out to Ken and I. I put our email addresses in the chat if you need to contact us to set up a meeting to learn more about any of the things we talked about today. Um, some of the districts that are using Zoom are Beaverton School District, uh, Federal Way School District, Go Eagles. I'm a proud alum of Federal Way High School. Um, and others uh, around the state, but there are many, many. Uh, one case in point, my daughter works at St. Mary's Academy here in Portland, Oregon. They were going down a competitive track uh, with another company, but the teachers revolted and said they wanted Zoom. Un I had nothing to do with it. It was all unsolicited by us, but it is the product of choice among many educators out there just because it is frictionless, and that's the main thing. Um, my, my closing comment is real simple, Stein. Um, I've never been to the top of the mountain, wherever this, this magical place is that I've heard everybody talk about for this conference happens. I've never been to the top of the mountain. So what I'm hoping for is when we get together, because it's going to happen, I get to see all y'all, use Southeast Oklahomaism, on the top of the mountain. And I, I appreciate you sticking with us. I know that sometimes these things can be one of those, uh, just turn it on, let it run. I really feel like a lot of you have really engaged, and, and thank you so, so much for doing that with us today. Yes, and and we'll we'll get you up here, Lance. You'll you'll get to experience ACPE in its fullest, awesome. and we will take you to the top of the mountain, uh, Mount Hood, if you want. We can uh, set up for you to climb Mount Hood, or at least get the Silcox hut and spend the night one night up there. So, that sounds good. Yeah. Hey, thank you, everybody. All well, we had a, a height of sixty people participate. That's a great number. We're super excited. Um, and ACPE is the best conference I've ever attended in my long career. And I like to keep it that way. So thanks, Steve. Stein and Lance, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, thanks, everyone, for staying engaged. This has been very helpful for me um, personally and hopefully for you as well. I want to encourage everybody, uh, take a short break, but get back here at 10 o'clock for the opening keynote from Tara Wheeler. So everyone have a great day at ACPE virtually, and uh, we'll see you all soon. Thank you, Stan, Stein, and thank you, Lance. Thank you, guys. We'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody.